Want to take cool macro shots at home just like these? Well, all it needs is a light, a lens and a flower. So let's get going. So the weather has been absolutely appalling where I live in Scotland. So I've been looking for some inspiration for things to shoot at home. And as regular viewers of my channel will know, that often means putting my macro lens on and finding things in my own home to take photos of. And what I've got today is a dead flower. Now I've taken various photos of living flowers on my channel, but once a flower starts to die, it crisps up and some of those colors start to go. And instead of having lovely smooth living petals, we've instead got some lovely crispiness. And what that means is a lot more details for a macro shot. So my setup for this is actually fairly straightforward. I have put the flower in a small clamp to keep it in place. I've got my Canon R5 with my 100mm macro lens secured on a tripod. And the light I'm gonna be using is this. This is the Zion Molus X100. Now I love this little light because it is really, really tiny. You can hold it just like this and you can either attach a battery pack or do as I've done and just plug it in via USB-C. Now you can get it with this little mini softbox, which again is great for macro photos because it means that all together, you've just got this very easy handheld light. You can move it around your scene and put that light exactly where you want it. So I've got my camera set up and I pretty much just got the flower framed in the middle right now. But because I've got it on a stand, I can basically just move it away, move it around, frame it up as I want to. And of course, even turn it around so that I can try and find the best looking angle for it. And to be honest, I already quite like this because we've got some of the dried up curled parts uh, of the petals facing the camera. We've got a little bit of a gap though where we can see the nice mound of the uh, stamen in the middle. So because I've got the camera and the flower both locked in position, it means that I'm free to just move this light around the scene. And so as you can see, I can bring that light in over the top and have it nicely cascading down over the middle of the flower. We could bring it off to the side that lights up a little bit more of the green stalk. We could even move it around the back and sort of backlighting the flower so that that light kind of cascades through those dried up petals. There's any number of ways that you can light this. So it's really handy having a small light that you can just hold with your hand. And while this one isn't especially cheap, I do think it is worth it if you do a lot of home macro. So I'm gonna take this picture and I'm gonna start with my aperture at F9 for sharpness, uh, a shutter speed of about 160th of a second and my ISO at 400. In fact, I'm gonna increase the brightness of my light and that is just gonna allow me to increase my aperture a little bit more up to F13, just to try and get a bit more of it in focus. And I wanna go quite moody with this first shot. I don't want everything to be nicely lit. I really kind of just want the suggestion of the top of this flower. So something like this, I'm gonna focus at a midpoint and then it takes the shot. And straight away, I quite like that. I can see that we've got lovely detail on the, uh, um, on the petals and on the stamen. But what I am noticing is that even at F13, because we are so close to the flower, while some of the petals are in focus, it does get quite soft towards the ends of them. And it is definitely quite soft focus on the top of these, uh, these nice stamen in the middle. Pretty sure it's stamen. Stamen? The nice yellow bits in the middle. Been quite a while since my GCSE, so apologies if I'm getting this wrong. Anyway, back to the photos. So even F13, I'm gonna to struggle to get everything that I want in focus. So what I'm gonna to have to do is focus stack my image. Now, all that means is taking a different photo, focusing first on a closest point on one of the petals, and then taking subsequent photos, moving that focus point throughout the scene, and then blending everything together in post. Now, some cameras, including my R5, have an automatic tool that just lets you program in the number of shots. You press go, and it just goes straight through them with the autofocus. Older cameras though probably don't have this function, not a problem, just takes you a bit longer. You literally just have to take a photo, turn the focus, take a photo, turn the focus. For this though, I am gonna use the automatic tool just because it saves me a bit of time. So I'm gonna turn my focus bracketing on. I'm gonna have number of shots, about 20. I probably don't need that many, but I'm gonna bring this light back into the shot and I'm gonna find the closest part of this image, which I think is there. 
make sure that my light is nicely positioned and then the camera will rattle through those shots. Okay, so I like that shot. So now I've got that one. I think I'm gonna move my camera around a little bit and just see if I can find another composition. So I think maybe I'm just gonna start off bringing this actually a little bit closer, but essentially otherwise a very similar composition to last time, just so that I've got one that really fills the frame with those petals. But my settings otherwise are the same. Just gonna to tap to focus on the closest point to the camera, which is exactly there. Make sure my light is in place and the camera will move through the scene. And I love just moving the light around like this because it just gives such different effects depending on where you put that light. So it's really fun, I think, to, once you've got your shot and your camera set up, just keep on firing away, but moving the light around and seeing what different effects you can get. Because some of them, I don't want them perfectly lit. I don't want every single bit of the flower visible. I want that real low key moodiness where it's just sort of giving the suggestion of the flower rather than showing the whole thing. But I'm gonna try a few shots here, just experimenting with the compositions, trying to put that light in some different places, but the techniques are all gonna remain exactly the same. So let's take what we've got now onto the computer and see about piecing everything together. So I've imported all my photos into Lightroom and I've actually taken quite a few. In fact, I've taken just over one and a half thousand images. So there's gonna be quite a lot to go through. Obviously, I'm not gonna do all of that right now. Uh, I'm just gonna give you a bit of an overview of how I would go about piecing these photo stacks together and how I would then polish up the image into something that I'm actually happy with. But I'll just start off having a little go through all of these shots and just seeing if any particular ones stand out. This looks promising. I do, ooh, I quite like the quite gentle lighting falling on this, although it is a little dark. Maybe more like this sort of shot. This looks kind of cool. And you can see as I move through these shots, how that focus changes. You can literally sort of see it moving forwards and backwards over those petals. I think I'm gonna start with this one then. So I'm just gonna put a one here just to kind of mark the first image. And I'm just going to click through as that focus point moves all the way back to its furthest point, which is here. I'm gonna then do another one. And then I can select all these images. Now I get a lot of questions on some of my videos about the order in which I do my edits versus doing my focus stacking. Because in some videos I've done some edits in Lightroom, applied those edits across all the images, then I've done the stacking. In other image, in other videos I've done the stack first and then I've gone to edit the photo. The reality is I kind of do both and I don't really have any particular reason why. Um, I get these questions saying, what's your process behind doing it this way or another? What's the benefit? I've no idea what the benefit is. Um, sometimes it's just the way I do it. Like anything in photography, there's usually more than one way to do a thing. And sometimes I do it one way, sometimes I do it another. And I'll be honest, there's no real reason as to why. Um, if anyone can tell me a legitimate reason why one is better than the other, then great. But as far as I know, it makes no difference. Anyway, what I can do is uh, right click on that selection, I can go edit in, and then I can go edit in Helicon Focus. Now, Helicon Focus is where I do all of my focus stacking. It is much better than doing it in Photoshop. Photoshop tends to be very poor when it comes to multiple stacks. Um, like that, two or three is fine, but we're looking at 20 images for this. Um, and yeah, Helicon is gonna do a much better job. So you can see all of the images now in this stack in Helicon Focus, um, right from the front focus all the way to the back focus. So I'm gonna select method B, no real idea why, it just generally seems to do the best job, and I'm gonna click render. And I can just watch as it moves through and builds it up, which is always, I think, quite a satisfying process. And here is our shot. That is a perfectly done stack. Yeah, Helicon Focus is really, really good. So I'm gonna press save, and I'm just gonna call it flower stack one 
because why not? And I'm going to save it as a TIFF file, and that's going to make sure that it's completely lossless. All of that information is going to be saved, so that's going to give me the best possible uh, uh, footprint to edit from, uh, just as if I was working from a DNG. Then I just go back to my import tool in Lightroom. So here is then this first stacked flower. Uh, it's definitely a little bit dark, so I'm going to bring up that exposure. Uh, maybe a little bit more than that, and then just bring back those highlights slightly. Uh, the shadows I can play around with, but I really like that it's so moody and, and dark. Um, and I think if we bring those shadows up, then it just starts to look a little bit like an HDR render. So instead, I'm going to keep them a little bit lower. I'm going to up them just slightly because that just gives the tiniest little hint of the stalk down here. And I like being able to see it a little bit rather than it falling to black might pulse these whites a little bit and I quite like that just giving a little bit of a pop and I do think that using the presence tool sometimes on macro shots can be really good because often we're told that clarity is the devil and it's just what amateurs use at 100 percent and sure if you whack it all the way up then things are going to look very crunchy very quickly but a tiny little bit plus four maybe is all it needs just to give it that little bit of crunch that little bit of pop um, I could maybe do similar with the texture as well it's going to help give it that little extra something as well and then from here I'm going to go down into the color mixer where we can uh, adjust the hue saturation and luminance of all our colors now this is typically where I do a lot of my work and I definitely think it's going to make a big difference here because we've got a lot of color going on now the petals I really like this sort of gentle purple tone that we've got. So I don't really want to do much with the hues there because if I pull that down, it goes blue. If I pull it up, it goes hot pink. And I don't really want either. So I'm going to keep it right bang where it was in the middle. But I'm going to slightly up the saturation. And I'm also going to bring down the luminance. That's just going to make it a little bit darker. And generally, a darker color looks a little bit more saturated. But it also helps kind of control those highlights just that little bit. Uh, so what about those magentas? Because we'll have some in there, I expect. There is a little bit on the inside of the petals, but again, if we start pulling it one way or another, it looks weird, so I'm just gonna leave it where it is. Blues, yeah, plenty of blues. And yeah, if I pull it down, it goes too blue. But I actually think pushing it slightly to the right, slightly more into the purples, kind of helps match that blue tone with the rest of the purples in the petals. So I quite like that. With the yellows, though, in the middle, we can see that we've got this sort of greeny yellow tone um, on, on the middle. And I don't really love that. I want quite a nice, vivid yellow. So I am going to get the yellow slider. Just pull that down to the left. Not too much. If we go all the way down, it's going to go orange. It's going to look very, very weird. But somewhere around maybe minus, maybe minus 20. I think a little bit like that. I'm also going to bring up the luminance just a touch. Uh, there might be a little bit of orange in there too, but I might actually bring that luminance down. Um, maybe slightly pull down the hue again not too much because it changes the color to an unnatural degree and we don't want that but maybe just less than the yellows minus six something like that um i don't think there's going to be much in the way of reds nothing to write home about anyway so if we just turn off that color mixer you can see we haven't changed the actual colors they are still very much what is there on the flower we've just sort of enhanced them a little bit given those yellows a little bit more pop and i think as well we've just brought in a little bit of the blues to be more like the purples which i think is a um i think is a nice touch so our before and our after before and our after obviously most of the heavy lifting in this shot has just been correcting that exposure and i don't really think it needs anything beyond that so i'm going to call this one done and move on to another stack but which one we have to go through and find another potential Mm, maybe. Okay, I am going to do this 
this one here because I really I do like this moodiness, this side lighting. Um, we've got it falling beautifully over the um, over the petals. It's just skimming the top of the of the flower where the uh, stamen are, and we've just got this nice edge light on the side of the stalk. So I do think that that actually works quite nicely. So put a one for our back focus shot, and then I'm clicking through lovely detail on these same again in fact you know what let's just to keep everyone happy let's do a few edits on this before we take it over into uh, helicon focus let's do this one the other way round, and that way no one can complain i mean they will and fair enough so i'm going to do basically similar edits to what i did before i do want to bring that exposure up but I want to be more mindful of it this time because the point of this shot, having that uh, that very much more prominent shadow versus highlight, I want to make sure that I'm maintaining that. And if I start pulling up shadows and pulling down all the highlights and whacking at the exposure, then suddenly we've lost that mood. And it just looks ridiculous, of course. So let's put that back to where it was. Something like this I think looks good. Again, little pop of the whites. Generally, when I'm editing and using these sliders, my usual process is to grab the slider and just sort of pulse it up and down just so I can see what it is it's actually doing to my image before I decide on where to put it. And I might actually bring those shadows down a little bit, just emphasize that depth even more. So before and after, yeah, again, that's looking good. I'm not going to touch clarity or texture on this one just yet. I might do a little bit afterwards. The hues, I'm gonna do a similar thing to what I did before. I'm gonna push those blues slightly more into uh, the purples, but only slightly, because if we go too far again, it goes pink. Uh, the purples, I'm gonna leave where they are. The yellows, again, I'm gonna bring down because I really don't like that sort of sickly green that we've got. But the green below, I am gonna push slightly more into the emerald green rather than the uh, yellowy green. If it's in the yellowy green, we've just got this weird woody stalk down there. Up here, we've got a lovely rich green that stands out quite nicely. I might also try and up that luminance, because if I pulse that up and down, you can just see that suddenly that stalk stands out a little bit more. And I really like that. Uh, maybe add an extra little pop of luminance to the flowers on top. What about those oranges? No, I was going to leave those in the middle. Aquas, nope. And yeah, I can just up the purples a little bit. Maybe even do similar with blues. And that's just basically giving a little bit more highlight, um, which in this shot is helping kind of carve out the shapes of those petals against the shadows on the left-hand side. I want to be careful that I'm not creating any sort of weird artifacts, though. And I do think I am here my magenta is causing a weird discrepancy between the colors. If I push it one way, we get this hard line. If I put it another way, we get a hard line, but the other way. So I have to be very careful to get it right in the middle where no line exists, which I think is about there. So that's looking fine to me before and after, before and after. Again, it's mostly about bringing up that exposure, but I think this is looking really nice. Uh, so with this one selected, I'm then going to go to this one with the other one star that I selected. Uh, shift and click to select all. And then on that first one that I've still got selected, right click, develop settings, sync settings. I'm just going to check all, synchronize. Now it's just going to copy those settings across all of those images, which is going to be great. So now I can right click, edit in, edit in Helicon Focus. So again, we can see our images nicely stacked up on the side in Helicon Focus. This time we've got 40 of them, is that right? Did I do a 40 stack? I thought I did a 20 stack on this. Have I got these in twice? No, I haven't. For some reason, it's loaded these stacked images on top of the first ones I had, rather than opening it as a new render. That's never happened before. Okay, I'm gonna select those and just press remove. So now I've just got those 20. 
Weird. Anyway, fine. Easily resolved. Render. Stack, 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 stack. And there's the stack. Look at that. I think that looks awesome. Oh, yeah. I do like that. I like that a lot. I'm going to save this, take it back over into Lightroom. Flower stack two. Save it as a TIFF. And here's our file. And if we have a little zoom in and move around. Oh, it looks good. Absolutely pin sharp. Lovely details. No errors in the stack, which is always really good to see. Now I could try and like refine this at this point and play these sliders even more. I may actually drag that shadow slider to the left a little bit more just to kind of emphasize this light coming in from the left, uh, sorry, coming in from the right, but I don't really want, need to do too much because we did so much before we took it over. What about adding just a little pop of clarity? I actually think on this one, I'm gonna leave it where it is. I'm just gonna slightly increase that texture though, plus five, because we have got so much crispiness going on there and I just think that that little extra bit of texture can help. I'm gonna apply a little bit of sharpening just because we didn't put any on before. To be honest, I don't think this image needs anything else doing to it. Like there are a couple of things like these tiny little bits of pollen and debris that have kind of fallen onto the petals, but I'll be honest, I quite like those. I don't really see any reason to remove them. They are naturally part of the plant. It's not like I'm removing a hair that's fallen or something else that was in my room that's fallen on there. So I try not to go too hard in taking things out of an image that I feel naturally should be there. And certainly some of these little blemishes, these are just part of the aging process of these petals. And as I know from my own aging process, these blemishes should really be embraced, not removed. So I'm gonna call it a day on those photos, but I hope that I've been able to show how easy it actually is to do these kinds of photo stacks and how to put them together in Lightroom. As I say, I don't know which way is better, edit first, then stack, stack first, then edit. I definitely do both with almost no reason as to why. Uh, if you've got a particular way that you like to work, then please do put that in the comments and let everyone know. But I've genuinely enjoyed doing this little photo project at home. Um, I really like the fact that I can have nice living flowers in the house and photograph them then. And then actually as they start to die and wither, I can photograph them even more and get shots like this. And particularly at the moment where the weather has been so bad and I just don't even want to go outside, having something like this to do at home has been great. But it's been such an easy one to do as well. So if you're looking for a project to do at home to keep your macro skills feeling sharp, then definitely give it a go. But that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, do please hit that like button. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.